Hey everybody, it is time for Meals with Melissa and I have to apologize, I know I have a late start this morning. I'm just in a new location, at least for the moment, and so of course, you know, technical difficulties all the way around. Hopefully you can see me there. The lighting here is not super fabulous, but I'm in Portland. Um, I'm staying at a residence inn. I love that because I can actually make my own food. I can do my own thing. Um, I don't have to worry about eating out all the time because you know, that's really difficult to do um, and be cost effective and also stay healthy. So. Um, this morning we're gonna do something fun. You know, I love Christmas traditions. That is, I love my family. Um, we love all those kind of fun things that make you just feel, especially this time of year, you just feel Christmassy and wonderful. Um, and so today we're gonna make a low carb cinnamon roll because honestly, my mother-in-law, um, bless her heart, um, used to make the best cinnamon rolls ever. Um, used a recipe more than once, but of course, you know, I try really hard not to do a lot of processed food and a lot, a lot of sugar, but every once in a while you want a treat. Um, now I'm gonna make a confession. I personally like to um, eat really, really healthy and clean on a regular basis, and then when I want something fun, Honestly, I prefer to eat the real thing, but I know that that's not reasonable for everybody, so I've really worked hard to find some great recipes that work for you. And again, I apologize for the horrendous lighting. I should have brought my lovely little circle light here, but we're gonna make it work. Um, and also, uh, multiple things have happened this morning, so I'm running a little bit behind on all the things that I'm trying to do, but that's okay. It's a weekend for my daughter and I to have a girls weekend, and we are going to go shopping and finish Christmas for the, for the year. So, okay, so what we're gonna do now, for those of you that did, um, that paid attention to my breakfast uh, biscuit uh, recipe several weeks ago, by the way, that was the bomb. Um, this is gonna be actually a similar recipe when it comes to the actual dough itself. You're actually using cheese versus um, you know, wheat, flour, and, and gluten, and things like that. So we're gonna start with, um, again, I'm halving the recipe. Um, I do have to tell you a couple things really quick. Number one, I've discovered, same thing with the biscuit dough recipe, that for some strange reason, when I add the egg that's required in the recipe, it turns everything to mush, which I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, the original time I made the biscuit dough, um, it worked just fine, and then I haven't been able to make it since besides not including the egg. So today, this recipe calls for two eggs. I'm actually not gonna add the egg. Um, I did make this yesterday. It turned out okay, but it didn't turn out, like it just was really weird. So we're gonna try it without the egg today. Um, and then once I'm done baking it, I'll actually post when I'm done how the difference in consistency of the dough the, the itself actually turned out so that you know whether or not that's an option to do. And I will include the recipe down below. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually turn on the oven, which again, the great thing about these hotels is they have a full kitchen. So I'm gonna turn on the oven to 375 to preheat. Okay, so I'm gonna do that right now. Only if I can figure it out though. It's a different place, it makes it a little tougher to do. All right. technical difficulties all the way around. So let's do, there we go, okay. That's an interesting, interesting, interesting oven. Okay, got it, all right. It's a, it's a dial, that's just very, very odd. Um, okay, then I'm going to spray and line my little container. Now, um, I'm using a six by six. Um, the recipe calls for an eight by eight, but because I'm making a half batch, um, like I normally do, I'm actually gonna use a smaller container because these are gonna spread out a little bit as they cook because it is primarily made with cheese versus actual flour and things that change the texture and make it a little bit different. Um, so I have, again, just looking for all the stuff that I brought yesterday. Um, I'm gonna spray it just a little bit. I'm gonna use a little bit of uh, parchment. I love parchment paper because it helps so that things don't stick. Um, and it's easy to pull out even if they do kind of leak out and, and do some weird things. So I'm gonna add some parchment paper. Now, as you know, in the last couple of weeks, um, for some reason, I bought wax paper instead of parchment paper. Um, they do work completely differently. Don't try to cook wax paper. Yeah. Okay. You know, you learn something new every day. All right. So spraying it allows the parchment to actually kind of stick to it a little bit as well so that it doesn't move around. All right. Now, I'm actually going to take... So here's the recipe. Okay. So the recipe calls for three and a half cups of mozzarella cheese. I'm halving that. So I'm going to do about a, a cup and three quarters. And I'm gonna put that in the microwave for about a minute. Um, I want it to melt down. So. Put it in for about a minute. All right, so while that melts, I'm also going to cut some cream cheese. Now, I don't do low fat cream cheese because honestly, because I'm cutting all the carbs out, I need the fats. So those of you that are doing keto, this is a great recipe because again, you're getting the calories that you need in through the fats. 
Um, so for this recipe, this part of the recipe, now there's multiple layers to this. Right now I'm doing the dough, then I'm gonna do the filling just like a regular cinnamon roll, and then I'm going to actually make a glaze. So for the dough itself, it, it calls for two tablespoons, and the great thing is of course on the packaging that it's all labeled out, so that all I have to do is cut it. But because I'm making a half batch, I'm gonna do two, two tablespoons, and as soon as the mozzarella cheese comes out of the microwave, I'm gonna throw that in there a little bit and let it kind of melt with it. And I'm gonna mix that alongside almond flour. Now almond flour has become a really, really great tool in my household. Um, we use it for all kinds of things. Coconut flour is a great one as well, um, but of course coconut flour is a completely different texture and it tends to absorb more of the liquids. And so um, a lot of times when I do use coconut flour, I only I use a portion of coconut flour and then I do almond flour as well. All right, so. I'm gonna throw this in here. I'm gonna mix it up really, really good. And if I have to, I can throw it back in. Because you want it to not be a stringy texture, you actually want it to mix, mix really well. Because that's gonna play a huge role in how um, you're able to roll it out. <clears throat> so I'm probably gonna pop this back in the microwave for just a sec and allow the cream cheese to kind of melt as well. So for about 30 seconds. Meanwhile, I'm going to take my measuring cup, okay? And I'm gonna use my almond flour. Now, anymore, it used to be that you had to go to some sort of a whole food store in order to find almond flour. No longer true. Even Walmart carries almond flour uh, locally to me. There's multiple places that I can get it. It's super easy and it's not nearly as expensive as it used to be. Um, so this recipe calls for, <clears throat> Uh, let's see, almond flour, almond flour. Um, one and a half cups of almond flour, but of course I'm halving it. So I'm going to do three quarters cup of almond flour. Again, I'll put the full recipe down below and that way you can, you can make a full recipe. Um, it's just my daughter and I this morning, so we don't necessarily need a full recipe. Um, but I do like to, like I said, make it the night before to make sure that the, the whatever I'm making actually turns out okay um, and that the texture's okay. And then if I do need to make some sort of a tweak to it, um, I can do that when I make it on in the morning. So um, as for next week, you should be able to see meals with Melissa for the next few weeks. Not planning on going anywhere. Did go to Cancun. I was in Cancun last Saturday. Um, had an absolute blast. It was difficult to come home, not gonna lie. That was, that was kind of difficult to do. Okay, um, before I finish mixing this, I'm actually gonna add um, Swerve or the erythritol sweetener. Um, again, you know, there's different things that you can use. I really try to avoid sucralose at this point um, because I've done enough research that shows that sucralose can spike blood sugar as well. It's not as carb friendly or low carb friendly or keto friendly as most people originally anticipated. Um, so I do use urethritol. Now, unfortunately, urethritol can cause some digestive distress. So make sure that if that's you, because I mean, honestly, if I eat too much of it, it really starts to do some weird things to my guts, um, that you kind of limit your consumption of it. <clears throat> Um, so I'm gonna really do a good job to mix this in and at some point I'm actually gonna knead it with my hands because otherwise it's really difficult to get it all mixed together and I wanna, I wanna make sure that the consistency is the same throughout, okay? Once I'm done, I'm gonna lay out some parchment paper with some wax paper on top of it so that I can uh, roll it out without it sticking. I know this is a little more complicated than some of the ones that I do, but honestly, I wanted to have something that was, I don't know, very Christmassy. It just, I don't know, sounded good. And <clears throat> this time of year, you know, I love to bake, so it kind of gives me that, uh, fulfills that urge to make something sweet um, and taste good and that the family, and the family will eat it. That's the great thing is I make everybody in my family test my recipes just to make sure that even my 10 year old will eat them. Um, and that works out pretty well. Okay, so that is the basis for my dough. Okay, I'm gonna get this out of the way. I'm gonna throw in, get some parchment paper down there so that I can get it rolled out. Now, I discovered in a couple of things, um, the butter that I'm gonna tell you about in just a second, you don't need nearly as much as it calls for. It just makes a big, big mess is what it does. Okay, all right. So get some of this stuff out of the way there. I'm gonna put some parchment paper down. So I've been doing a lot of research on why we tend to eat the American diet, why we are so addicted to the foods that we have. Um, and it's actually called hyperpalatability. Um, it, it's a word, it's a real thing, it's a science. Um, and what I find interesting is that, you know, most people struggle because they're like, why, you know, if I start eating a bag of potato chips, why do I struggle to stop? 
Um, well, you know what? That's because that's the way that food companies have designed it. They want you to keep coming back and keep coming back and keep coming back. So there is something called a bliss point that companies are working for. And what that just means is that it's enough of sugar, salt, and fat, because of course fat is texture, salt keeps the balance of the sweet, and if, so of course whatever that mixture of the taste um, on your tongue and the texture keeps you coming back. And the one thing that I keep thinking about when I think about hyperpalatability and um, the bliss point and the foods that we tend to eat is cinnamon. Now, again, I love cinnamon rolls, so, and churros, churros are good too. Um, so I get, you know, that it's kind of become an American staple, um, but the downside is, is that, you know, the food companies don't want you to know that they're designing it so that you do keep coming back because it's all about the money that they're trying to make. So if you can find a way to kind of skirt that, um, make some things that are a little healthier for your family, and if you do eat the real thing, kind of like I do, not do it on a daily basis because of course, the foods that we eat, the processed food and the sugars is what's aging our bodies and causing all these chronic metabolic diseases. And of course, I'm frustrated because they don't give two craps about you um, and your health. They just want to sell product. And my thought process is, you know what? We're all going to die someday. We're, our life is, we all die. I mean, whether it's old age or not, what makes them think that their lives and their money and their greed is more important than us? I just have a problem with that. Okay, rant over. All right, so here we go. I am going to soften a little bit of butter real quick. Okay. Now this might not be as pretty um, as your regular cinnamon roll, but you know, honestly, this isn't necessarily going to be uh, front page of a magazine worthy. This is, mm, I really want some cinnamon rolls. That's what, that's what the goal is here. So you don't want to get it too thin or it's going to be tough to roll up and you're going to have it to roll too far. So I'm just going to leave it fairly thick. Again, I use that wax paper because then it comes right off and I don't, don't have any of the dough sticking with it. Okay. So I'm gonna melt the butter for just a second. Now, if you've been sitting at room temperature, it should be fine, um, but mine's been in the fridge here. So I'm gonna hide, I'm just gonna nuke it for a second, just enough to just kind of make it soft so I can spread it. Now, I'm also going to use cinnamon, okay? And of course, cinnamon's a freebie. Cinnamon has no calories, it's a spice. Um, I'm also going to use a little bit of, um, again, the stevia or the, the swerve that has a little bit of stevia and erythritol in it, um, and also, um, so the butter, yep, we got everything there. So a little bit of butter, give it a second there. A little bit of butter, I'm gonna spread that throughout, just like if you've ever made cinnamon rolls before, this is really similar. Um, up to the whole point that I am, if I can find it in my little mess here, um, I'm going to use floss to actually cut the strips. Okay. So again, you don't need a full, um, it calls for a half a cup, um, which is going to be a full cube. Um, I'm halving it, so I have a fourth a cup here, but I don't even need that much. I found out real quick yesterday that um, it goes a very, very long way, and all it ends up doing is it seeps out as you're baking it. So I'm gonna put this across it. I'm gonna throw, it says two tablespoons of cinnamon. Um, I'm honestly just gonna eyeball it. I like cinnamon, so I don't have a problem with, you know, putting some cinnamon on there. All right, so I'm just gonna get to the side that, it's just, there we go, got some cinnamon, okay. Uh, about a fourth cup, again, of the swerve. Again, you can eyeball it. It depends on how sweet you like it. Um, you know, I find it fascinating that there are people out there who aren't, in, aren't don't love sweets. Um, since I've always had a sweet tooth my whole life, that, those people must be weird, right? <laughs> then again, I know some people like savory, some people like salty. It really just depends on what your thing is, right? Okay. So... I think that's plenty. So I'm gonna roll it up, and then again, I'm gonna take my um, floss here that I'm not sure where it is in the little mess that I've thrown together. Oh, there we go. Okay, a little bit of floss. What that does is it makes it super easy to cut. You're not trying to use a knife. You're not trying to um, get through that situation um, and make a big mess or create uneven cuts. All right, so I'm just gonna roll it. It's pretty easy to work with at this point. The dough is stiff enough. Uh, that it doesn't really cause me any problems. Where it's gonna come <laughs> down to the problems is that some of the thinner pieces are going to spread out while it bakes and be a little weird. So just kind of trying to get, give you the lowdown in advance. All right, so I'm using my piece of floss, okay? You just bring it under. It's about the size of piece that you want. Now, the full recipe says that it makes about 12, 12 rolls. Um, yeah, sounds about right. Again, I'm doing half, okay? So I'm just gonna wrap it around pull it across and it just cuts it cuts it clean, okay? I'm gonna put those little pieces in my already prepared container. 
Now today I won't have one to show you just because um, the one that I made last night was at home um, and I wasn't super, super happy with the consistency. Um, I really wanted, I just decided that we were gonna omit the egg and see what happens. Okay, so you know, if you wanna try the egg, you could also try egg whites. Um, I find that, you know, sometimes when you do leave out an ingredient um, or change the consistency, like egg whites instead of uh, a whole egg, um, knocking out the fats can really change a little bit on that. Okay, my oven is ready to go. I got a couple more pieces to cut here. I'm gonna throw it in. And I'm going to show you the glaze. Again, I'm not gonna show you the finished product. I'll take a picture when I'm done and I'll post it below just so you can see what this round looked like. Uh, I really do wanna see what it looks like without the egg in the recipe. Okay, here we go. So this is done. It's in my container. I'm gonna throw it in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. Now again, because I've made it with cheese, it's gonna bake a little differently than if you were using a, any sort of a yeast dough or a gluten dough. Okay, so I'm gonna throw that in there and set the timer. For about 50 so what you're looking for is just a golden brown top when it's done this already I'm gonna tell you the consistency without the egg looks a lot better than it did with it so let me throw that in the oven okay I'm gonna set my timer for about 15 to 20 minutes check that I'll check that before it's done just to make sure that it doesn't burn all right the so last thing I'm gonna do is make the glaze now the glaze is ridiculous easy okay so all you're taking is a little bit of the cream cheese um, now it calls for four tablespoons again I'm halving it so I'm only gonna do two I'm gonna just microwave it down just a smidgen uh, just because this has been in the fridge and I want it to uh, pour or at least spoon over the glaze really easily, so I'm going to throw it in the microwave for a sec. There we go. I'm then going to add one teaspoon of vanilla. Now, again, you can half that because it really doesn't need it, but I find that I actually need it to be a little runny, so I don't mind doing a full teaspoon of this in, even though we're halving the recipe. Um, and then I'm going to actually add a little bit of Swerve Confectioners. Okay, so you can get Swerve in a couple of different types. Um, again, Swerve is the erythritol. Um, this is confectioner, so it is the consistency of powdered sugar, which means that it absorbs a little bit better and it spreads a little bit better. It's a better icing sugar um, than using, although you could use either. You know, if that's what you have in the house, um, you could use either. So I'm gonna use a little bit of vanilla, vanilla extract, and then honestly on your erythritol, you're just gonna have to decide how sweet you want it and how, um, how thick you want it. And I don't necessarily want it to be super thick, or super sweet because I've already got your erythritol in both the filling and the dough itself. So I'm just kind of getting a softer consistency. I guess you could add a little bit of water or milk um, or heavy cream if you wanted to. I don't really think it needs to. When it, when it comes out and it's hot and I put it directly on there, it's gonna melt a little bit anyway and so it'll be more of a glaze which is what I'm looking for. Okay, so yes, I know this is the most complicated <laughs> recipe that I've made in a while, and I do try to keep things simple. Um, but because it's the season, I really wanted to make something that was a little more fun, a little more Christmassy. Um, I literally typed in low-carb Christmas treats, and so that's kind of what I came up with um, was the cinnamon rolls. I mean, who doesn't love a good cinnamon roll, especially when it's cold outside? Um, I'm all about when it's this cold out, I want hot chocolate. I want to curl up with a blanket. And um, at our house this season, since we're doing a Harry, Thot Harry Potter-themed Christmas, uh, we're going to sit down and we're going to have a marathon of Harry Potter movies. So it's going to be a great season. I'm pretty, pretty excited um, with all the things coming up, especially with very soon. I will be a grandmother for the first time. So pretty soaked with my life right now. It's, it's pretty amazing, but okay. So if you have questions, um, if I haven't messed that one up too much for you, like I said, I don't do complicated. This is the most complicated you're gonna see me pull up. Um, please text me or message me below. I do my best guys. I'm just trying to help you out, find some ways that work for you that help you to keep a healthier lifestyle. So have an incredible weekend, you guys. Happy holidays. And until next week, we'll see you soon. Have a good one. Bye-bye now.